Welcome everyone to today's 18th episode and we are so excited. We are so excited because there is 8 news and there is one nice surprise from Tommy. Maybe it's not the surprise because we already know there was 35 likes, 5 comments. So Tomáš will dance for us, but stay tuned. Tommy, <laughs> how was your week? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, it was perfect. But uh, I just want to congrats you because uh, you have become a very, very important person in a very important organization. Maybe, oh, you, can, you. <laughs> maybe you can tell us uh, what's going on on your side. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's true. I became a jury member at FWA, uh, which is a big awards website. Gives like the best, the best awards for web uh, executions around the world. So yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, good to be there, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> really me. nice, really nice, amazing, amazing, really. Guys, if your website will be in the competition for FWA awards, probably Chris will be the one uh, who will be judging your website. So yeah, you can uh, you can leave a comments under this video to you know make uh, make some interaction with Chris and maybe you will <laughs> buy his attention. <laughs> no, just kidding. But, okay, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, stop this. <laughs> Let's go to the news because, yeah, as I, as I mentioned, there is eight news today. And what's the first one? Okay, guys, so the first one is about the progressive uh, JPEG XL images. And the second news, I'm sure that all you guys know, uh, you don't know JS book and uh, the videos. Uh, so apparently there will be second part and yeah, Tomasz will tell you more about this. Exactly. And uh, after that, I'm going to speak about the new SCMA proposals. Oh, finally. I saw your pick colors with JavaScript. Yeah, and uh, then we have a small releases block. And at the first, we will speak about React Router version 5.3.0. Ember 4.0. And our lovely Node.js with the version number 16.9.0. But this time, this time I have something new to announce for you. Oh, sounds great. And the last one is gonna be about Matrix. Mm -hmm. This is a small surprise at the end uh, and I would like to share my screen uh, to show you something interesting. I'm a huge fan of Matrix, so, so this is a small tweak about uh, Matrix world. Okay, I'm so excited, I can't wait to hear that, so let's watch the intro and see you there. Hey guys, so we, we have news, we watched the intro and it's the main part where Tommy K will dance for us because you scored 35 likes and 5 comments in the last episode. Make it great again and score more this time, but yeah, Tommy, go ahead. Okay, I need to prepare and let's start this madness. <laughs> Okay guys, I hope you like it. <laughs> I really enjoyed this dance. Uh, let's see what's gonna happen in the next episode. But now, let's jump into the news. What was first, Tommy? It was something with JPEG, as far as I remember. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, this was my first dance on uh, this channel. Hopefully the last one. <laughs> but thank you for all the likes and all the comments. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we would love to, 
interact with you more often so don't hesitate and leave comments under all of our videos and we 100% sure will respond for your message so yeah just Tomasz what's in the news oh come on news 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 all the time okay 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 progressive JPEG XL images. So what's going on with that? Getting images that will be delivered pretty fast in the web is really crucial and important topic and it's really hard to, uh, you know, optimize all the assets loading to make it pretty fast. But different teams experiment with different approaches and there is something like um, progressive images loading and the Google team decided to experiment with such approach and with the JPEG XL format and they produced something that really helps to load the images much faster. Uh, so they are using the machine learning to detect what part of image is the most important, is salient. So this is the place where the user will put his eyes, uh, will focus as the first uh, thing on the whole image. Because the human eye and human brain works like that. If we, will, if we are looking at the image, we are not observe all the image at once. There are some spots that are more important or less important. Thanks to machine learning, we can detect this important uh, places on the whole image and thanks to the algorithms they will load faster and before the rest of the spots on the image. Sounds like rocket science to me. Okay, so really simple example, okay? Imagine that we have the photo of human face. Um, what is the spot where you will focus uh, at first? Probably the face. Face, like but, eyes, but where? Nose. What spots on face are the most important eyes. for you? Eyes, exactly. So if we want to display the image of the human face, eyes will be fetched as the first, you know, uh, before the rest of the face and they will be displayed without any blurred pixels. It's gonna look weird, wouldn't it be? Uh, maybe, but the difference will be in milliseconds, in, you know, less than a second, but it will give this effect that you will focus at the eyes, for example, you will see the eyes and you will not spot that the rest of the image is not fully fetched yet. It I will see. be blurred, for example. I wonder if all websites will use this technique. Okay, Chris. And uh, yeah, that that was it. Uh, it's all from the progressive sure. JPEG XL. Sure, Tommy. Jokes aside, it's it sounds really interesting. I wonder how it's gonna work. Yeah, personally, I will check the examples after this uh, presentation because yeah, I'm very curious. But speaking about curiosity and about JavaScript, uh, I can't wait to hear what's gonna be with the next version of you don't know JS yet. Guys, probably you know the You Don't Know JS series where you can find a lot of stuff, uh, educational stuff and very, very well uh, performed stuff about the JavaScript world ecosystem, about the language itself and about the rules, how to use it. And uh, this is this is something that uh, I was using at the beginning and in the middle of my journey with the JavaScript. And sometimes I'm going back to the you don't know JS. And uh, believe me or not, Kyle Simpson decided to write the second version of this book, in including uh, new SCMS standards. So. Um, that he decided to begin the project on the Kickstarter and at the time I was seeing uh, this project he was like four thousand dollars before he will cross the finish line so uh, he need like thirty thousands of dollars to begin uh, the new series of the you don't know JS yet and guys if you can help just you know Let's help Kyle to finish this book. I'm interested in the new uh, series, so uh, probably I will, maybe not probably, I will help him. Cool, let's make JS better uh, and, <laughs> and help the guy, uh, but yeah. Let's support the community. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and jump to the next news, which is? The next news are new proposals. I really like to watch the JavaScript grow and like how it changed over the years. Uh, so I'm really excited. What's in the new proposal to me? That's correct. So in new proposals, we receive uh, two things. The next one is an RI new method. It's called from async and it works like it converts the async iterables to a promise that will be resolved to an array. So imagine we have a collection of 
you know, some um, async iterables. It can be the data fetched from the backend and it will be fetched asynchronously. So this collection will be asynchronous. And thanks to the new method, you will be able to iterate over such a uh, thing and uh, resolve the result to straight to the array. We have uh, such solutions uh, in the NPM packages. One of the packages called in all, for, I think. And I'm not sure. there is over 60,000 downloads per day. So it means that this is really important functionality and uh, starting from the new proposal, I mean, once the new proposal will be accepted, it will be included by default in native functionality. For now, you can play with it on the newest Chromium, I believe. And the next thing is a big int for math library. Um, there is a huge problem with the numbers in JavaScript. Is it already in? Unfortunately not. JavaScript do not have a big int native implementation in math library. I remember similar news from their last proposal. I mean, I haven't used it since then, but uh, I remember this proposal already. Actually, Chris, this is something new and it occurred like in last week or two weeks. So I'm not sure if you are using this, if you are reading the same thing as I want to present, but... In Tommy K, we trust. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so the math library will receive a new format, big int, which is really important for mathematical, financial, and uh, scientific applications. Um, this is these two proposals. So just two of them? Yep, so just I, two. I was them. reading some rumors about new classes implementation. Oh, really? Maybe, maybe you want to uh, tell more in the next episode or maybe Today, yeah, why not? I, I, I'm happy to prepare this news for the next episode, uh, but today let's jump into Color Picker. Okay, Color Picker is an interesting thing. Uh, it will become a new native API that we can use. Actually, it's in Chromium 95. Uh, Firefox and Safari does not support it, but yeah, what is this pick colors functionality? The eyedropper, this is how, how it's called, uh, the new API that will allow the developers to pick the color not only from the website we are looking at, but from the entire screen. And we can do it from the JavaScript code. So this is it. <laughs> do you have any examples how it's gonna work, Tomak? Yes, the, the examples are in the documentation, in an official documentation. And as always, the link is where? In the description. That's true. <laughs> But uh, to, be, to be serious, you can find an example of how to use this new native API. It's more like, you know, uh, creating the instance of eyedropper class and uh, after the document will be loaded and we have fully access to the uh, DOM tree. We can manipulate it and uh, it means that also the JavaScript code has been fetched and it means we can run the code and pick the color from the place we want. Okay, Tommy, thank you for this explanation. Sounds great. Let's test it ourselves. But now we, let's gonna speak about tool we use every day. Uh, it comes with React. So React Router, let's see. Okay, so React Router version 5.3.0, nothing big inside new version, but uh, really important for those who are using functional CSS, uh, for example, Tailwind. So in fact, we can pass a function as a value for property called style or class name in React. Before we could pass only objects or strings and now we can pass a function that will get is active flag as a param. That's because we want to style, for example, the active state uh, for the link. Yep. And this is the way yeah, how we always want, do. Yeah. And this is the way how they want to uh, deliver us uh, this functionality. So starting from this release, you can use functions instead of objects or strings. OK, thank you, Tommy. Unfortunately, no breaking changes again. But uh, yeah, let's see what's in the next release. Uh, but now it's about Ember 4.0. So yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of breaking news here. <laughs> I have to disappoint you, Chris. There are no breaking oh, changes. Oh, come on. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe uh, there is a breaking change, but no new features. The Ember 4.0 will remove the depreciated API functionalities from the previous versions. So it's more like, you know, clean the field and prepare the Ember for something new, for something big in the next versions. You can start and join the beta right now and they are really welcome all interesting developers because they are looking for feedback and for sure they want to test if uh, everything works fine and that's from the Ember world guys. Okay, thank you Tommy, uh, because this one was short, I think that next one about Snowed is gonna be breaking this time. So yeah, uh, in the new Node.js. Okay, uh, this time I want to present something interesting and maybe a little bit weird. In the newest release of the Node, which is 16.9, uh, the Node team introduced uh, something that's called Core Pack, uh, which is a manager to dependency managers. So it's like NVM for the NPMs. And thanks. To I was I was reading about this actually. Yeah, uh, uh, sounds interesting. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks to the core pack, you can manage the different versions of the yarn or pnpm, uh, which is the npm alternative. We have a uh, few package managers. So, um, but it's not all. Also, in the newest release, the V8 engine has been updated to the version. 9.3 uh, that includes some performance improvements and new javascript features for example uh, there is a new feature for objects which is uh, object dot has on and the second thing is error cause which actually allow us to uh, construct errors with a cause option pointing to another error so we can create a chain of errors for example you know the second error occurred because the error first occurred okay something like that um so they success messages but Yes, uh, but sometimes we need to handle errors too, and this should improve the way how we do it. And actually that's it. Uh, there are some minor fixes as always. Uh, rest of the stuff is in the documentation, so guys, you can just check our description and get the link to, uh, to see it on your own. And that's it from the note world. Sure, I really encourage you to, to check the description and read everything uh, yourself as well. So the last one yep. was Matrix, right? Yes, What's the last the Matrix? thing. Uh, let me share my screen. Can't wait. Can you see my screen? Yes, I do. Uh, how to run this? It was... I don't know. No. Mm. Okay. Wow. You are a hacker now. Yes, I'm hacker. I can watch watch it all the time, all all day long, you know. It's my new favorite yeah, thing to do. I, I was I was thinking that you're gonna tell us that there is new trailer for the Matrix 4 movie. Okay, okay, actually you got this. Uh, yeah guys, there is a new teaser for the Matrix. It will be Matrix Resurrections. Uh, it will be in theaters on December 22 something Whoa. like that so can cannot wait and for now i can just uh see this beautiful matrix on my screen and yeah this is this is it enter the matrix guys <laughs> <laughs> enter the matrix with us and see you in the next episode and in the meantime <laughs> check our twitter linkedin youtube facebook and our website frontendhouse.com and instagram and see you guys there Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. It's nice episode. Good news. See you guys. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs>